Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, we're running late, so I'm not going to waste time on pleasantries. <laughs> we'll just plunge straight in. OK, Mark, should I ask you the question all these people want to ask you, but are probably too polite to ask you? Did you already tell them what they wanted to ask? Is that I, I, I have a pretty good idea what hotel is want okay. to ask you, which is in an era where Starwood and Marriott have merged to create this giant. Where exactly does Hyatt fit in? Uh, I've heard about that merger. Yeah, yeah. right. Sure. Um, I guess uh, what I would say is, um, you know, we have a unique position in the industry. Uh, we are not amongst the, uh, if you measure by hotel properties, that is, amongst, amongst the mega players. Uh, and yet we are the largest, uh, we, we are, we're still a large uh, multi-branded, multinational company. So we've been competing in this, in this context for many years. So it's nothing new to us. Uh, the relative scale differential that that merger represented was not some magical inflection point. The laws of physics didn't magically change in that equation. And what I would say is, in our industry, um, size does matter to a point. And uh, what we've found, and if you and if you uh, need evidence of it, you can see our results, is that we have uh, sufficient scale in order to be able to compete effectively. And if you look at our operating performance, whether you look at RevPAR um, growth in different markets or market share, RevPAR index, RMSI, um, we've been competing at a very high level and in many, many uh, examples, quarters over the last couple of years, uh, industry leading levels. And then if you look at our pipeline uh, for future hotel openings, uh, we currently have the largest pipeline as a proportion of our installed base. So I guess what I would say is we stay focused on what we're trying to do. Um, and I think focus is our friend. And we are focused on the high-end traveler. And we're applying that very consistently. And we do enjoy sufficient scale to be competitive. So it's in that context that I, I think about the industry um, uh, structure as it exists today. From an industry perspective, does the merger of Starwood and Marriott really change the rules of the game? However well you will continue to do? I mean, as an overall perspective question. No, I, I think for us, it certainly doesn't in, the, in that we uh, really are not trying to compete in the same way that uh, Marriott is competing with maybe Hilton or IHG or uh, the other uh, larger players. By the way, if somehow you magically zapped uh, me into Arnie's job and Arnie into my job, I, I'm sure that I would pursue a lot of the things that he's pursuing. And my guess is he'd pursue a lot of the things that I'm pursuing mm -hmm. because we're in different positions. So I'm not suggesting that one's wrong, right and the other's wrong. It's just a different way to compete. And, and our, uh, our real focus and attention is first and foremost to focus on the customer base that we're serving, always go after efficiencies, uh, so that we can make sure that we are generating returns for owners. And we are uh, compelled to do that because we are still a large owner of our own hotels. So amongst the major brands, um, we are one of the few that actually owns and operates a, a large number of hotels. So I'd like to say we eat our own cooking. And for those of you who have enjoyed Hyatt's F&B over time, you know it's pretty good cooking. Um, mm. So we enjoy it. But uh, we eat our own cooking every day. And so that's, that's what I would say is, uh, is an important factor. Let's talk a little bit about Hyatt in India. I remember the Hyatt Regency opening in Delhi in 1982 for, I think, two weeks. And then it closed and opened again in 1983. Right. And then we had no Hyatt for a long time. And then this hotel opened and many other Hyatts opened. You're now, I want 28 properties? Yes. You're in a situation where if I go to Pune, I go to Ludhiana, I go to Amritsar, I go to smallish towns, soon Cochin, there's almost always a Hyatt which is the biggest and best hotel in town. It's an interesting strategy for an international company to follow. So explain the India strategy to us. Well, I guess first and foremost, um, there's tremendous passion uh, and respect for this for hospitality in India. Uh, personally, um, I think so much of this business is about emotion and about uh, personal passion. And I'm personally passionate about this market. Uh, I've been maybe an apologist or a, 
a supporter in the face of challenging uh, circumstances over the last decade. Um, so uh, maybe my credibility is suffering a little bit because I didn't really appreciate the, uh, all of the vicissitudes of the Indian ho hotel market. But there's something special about hospitality uh, here. And um, for us, I think it was, it was very much about celebrating that. We have been blessed with amazing partners from the very beginning. Uh, if you look at our beginning here, it was really the result of the confidence of three families, the Saraf family, the Jatia family, and the Gupta family. Um, I think many of you know our history around those incredible relationships that have grown over time. Um, and of course, now in today's world, we're expanding and extending uh, beyond that original group. But so much of it has been based on relationships with owners and developers and really trying our best to appreciate what it takes to be successful. I think as we've extended our, um, our brand portfolio, we started with, uh, of course, the Hyatt Regency um, and brought to that hotel uh, really some of the things that made Hyatt special elsewhere in the world, which was first and foremost food and beverage offerings. We had uh, really notable and uh, remarkable restaurants that were unequaled in, in other hotel experiences in India at that time. And we've continued to extend that into new concepts uh, in some of the hotels that we have open and operating in Chennai with the Flying Elephant, in Andaz Delhi with the Anamaya Hotel and now the Hong Kong Club, uh, the China uh, House here, China Kitchen in Delhi. These are all um, uh, really great examples of bringing uh, truly deep, authentic cuisine, including getting, bringing ducks uh, into India from China and raising them here so that we could have the appropriate uh, raw, raw materials for the, for, the, for the food that we're making. So I think that has actually been key to the guest experience that we've offered. And now that we've expanded our, our hotel brand portfolio to include, importantly, Hyde Place and Hyde House, which are um, more efficient to build at a lower cost and also at a lower price point, we find many new markets mm -hmm. that we can expand into. That's really been the big evolution, and I, I predict that as we look forward in time, something like maybe 30 or 40 percent of our ter current pipeline in India, which is over 30 hotels, is in, those, in, in that segment, in the high place and high house segment. So I think that that will continue to be a major source of growth for us. You talked about the confluence of families and Hyatt's expansion within India. It's interesting you should say that because while I think the world always sees Hyatt for what it is, a large international corporation, it's always struck me as being a company that's very keen on family, on family values. Is that something you would agree with? No question about it. Um, you know, uh, we, we refer to everyone who works uh, in a Hyatt hotel, whether it's managed or franchised, no matter where it is, as a member of the Hyatt family. And our relationships are very familial. Uh, it's more a, a culture in which you would find, instead of uh, shaking someone's hand and asking about results, you would see showing up at a hotel and hugging the GM and asking about their family. Um, that's really the principle on which we operate, and those personal relationships are alive and well within the company. I can tell you my personal story. I was working for the Pritzker family, the founders of Hyatt, and back in 2006, I was asked to be the interim president of the company while a search was underway for mm -hmm. a, a permanent president and CEO. And my, I had no intention of staying. Uh, I was supposed to have a short-term um, position, and here I am more than 11 years later, so you know how that turned out. Um, but after just a few months, I went into Tom Pritzker's office and I said, I don't know how your search is going, but I have found myself falling in love uh, with the people, with the culture. Um, it was very powerful, and it was a very purpose-driven business uh, and spirit to begin with, and that was really inspirational to me. So yes, yeah. yes, we were founded by a family, but it's also true that the, the culture within the company is very family-oriented itself. Yeah. One sort of imagines, and I've seen your offices in Chicago, and I've seen Hyatt's around the world, one somehow imagines, and this is, forgive me, it's a third world prejudice, but we imagine giant American corporations as being made with hearts of glass. But Hyatt has always consciously been different, hasn't it? There's always a sense of caring. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely feel it. Um, in fact, as I've investigated this, 
when I joined Hyatt, I always felt like there was something much bigger than just making money in the hotel business that the company was really doing. And uh, the analogy I would use is in the early days of NASA, there's a, a story about a camera crew showing up in Houston, and they stop a janitor uh, as they were walking down the hallway, and they asked him what, what he was doing there. And he turned around, and without missing a beat, he said, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. Like, very clear <laughs> yeah. purpose. And, and he I, was. And he was. He was, yeah. he was. And that connection to something bigger was something I always felt at Hyatt. And when I really dove into this about five years ago, mm -hmm. looking, um, you know, investigating what that special thing was, the thing that came through, sorry, my microphone is yes. off and on. It's a so um, temperamental microphone. The thing that came through loud and clear was um, a sense of care. People fa felt cared for. And they also um, were fulfilled by the opportunity to care for others. And care is a complicated thing. It's not service. Everyone talks about great yeah. service in our industry. But care is a step beyond service. Yeah. In order to care for someone, you have to get to know them, which means practicing <coughs> empathy and taking a moment to connect and understand them well enough to understand what it is that you might be able yeah. to do for them that's unique to them. And then you have to take action. And if you combine those then you end up actually expressing yeah. care. And I think that is at the center of everything that we do. Hi. A mistake many hotel companies make is that if you don't care for your employees, they're not going to care for their guests. Yeah. You're ultimately in the hospitality caring business. Yeah, that's exactly Some, right. Something about India intrigued me. You mentioned what you were doing in India. You are more and more an Indian company. The head of Hyatt in India now is an Indian. There are many more Indian general managers than ever before. There are many more Indian chefs than ever before. Yes. The sensibility is much more Indian than it has been at any time. Is that, con is that a conscious decision? Uh, there's no question about it. Um, I, I personally think that there's so much talent here that we should be seeing a lot of exportation, of exporting of talent from India to other parts of the world. We have already seen this in many uh, dimensions uh, in our business, but I think that was, should accelerate over time. I think one of the other things that's been a, a conscious focus is the fact that we have elevated and promoted uh, because they are uh, a critical part of, of of the Indian economy, but also our future is, is women in our industry. Yeah. There, there was historically more of a stigma attached to the hospitality business, but that's dissipating, and you see more and more women in leadership positions, which I think is absolutely fantastic and essential. Um, so I think that's another leg of opportunity ahead of us, but there's no question that that's been yeah. an explicit, uh, explicit effort. You also have this thing about India. I remember two years ago going into your office in Chicago and discussing Hyatt in India and telling you that I went to the Park Hyatt and go, which if you're lucky will not be a Park Hyatt for much longer. But I remember going and saying how much I hated it and, coming <laughs> and going to the Hyatt in Ludhiana. And you actually knew both hotels and you were able to tell me what was right with the Ludhiana property where it worked. Is that true of all your hotels? Do you take that level of interest? Well, uh, I, so I love being here. I love visiting India. I brought my whole family uh, for our holiday uh, between Christmas and New Year's, and we had a fantastic tour of Rajasthan, but, but also ended the, ended the trip in Varanasi, and, which was a life experience for all of us. Uh, really? Oh, a life experience? Yeah. Life experience. So I have three children um, from age 14 to age 21, and uh, about a month passed, and we were all together again, and I asked them each, I said, so we went to Jaisalmer, and we stayed in a beautiful tented camp, and we saw these Jain temples, which were incredible in the old fort. Jodhpur, and Udaipur, and Agra, and I said, so we did all these incredible things, stayed in these amazing hotels. No Hyatt's along the way, unfortunately. Mm. We're working on that. Okay. Anybody in those cities that has any interest in doing something with us, count me in. Okay. Um, and uh, I said, so what was your favorite part? And to a person, they all said Varanasi. Really? Yeah, because it was moving. It was, it was, a, it was a, such a human, uh, powerful hum, human, you know, expression of humanity. And we were all moved. We were all moved by it. It was, uh, it was I've had this experience a few, only in a few places in the world. So my first visit to, to Jerusalem, walking the streets and knowing the history, it was, it, I felt something different. Mm. It was somewhat 
emotional and psychological or something like this. And then in New Mexico, in the United States, there's a, some sacred place uh, for Native Americans, Indians. And, um, and then in Varanasi, so only really, one of only three places I can count on my, on my fingers uh, uh, that I've been somewhere where it was definitely something beyond just physically being there. So it was magnificent. So my point to you is I, I'm passionate about being here. I love the experiences. And so, yeah, I probably have done more traveling than maybe our total business size yeah. in India warrants because uh, I love it. I'm always astonished by how well you know Indian places that many of us haven't been. But on a more serious note, you've talked about Indian managers. You're talking to an audience of Indian hoteliers. What do you think are the strengths of Indians in the hotel business? What do we bring to the profession? Well, I think the thing that I was first most struck by um, in visiting India, and this happened on my very first trip here, was this concept of home hospitality. I think it's... So my first trip, I, I visited the homes of every one of our partners, uh, existing uh, partners and then prospective partners, went into their homes and ate with their family around their own dining table. Uh, and this tradition I find amazing uh, and also so warm and inviting and intimate. It's just an incredible thing. So I think that there's something about there's something in the, in the genetic pool about this extension of hospitality and, and, a, and a sharing of warmth that is uh, inherent in, in the people that I, I come into contact with. This is really principally why I love being here so much. So I think that is the core <clears throat> foundation because, of course, the structure and the facilities and the buildings are really important. You have to have a great product in order to um, be able to deliver great experiences, but nothing is more important than the people. And so, to me, there's like an unfair advantage that you start with here in India, which is you've got a, a tremendous sense and depth of warmth and, um, and personal connection that I think is just natural. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about Hyatt. Many people here will argue, and it's a contrary view, I think, to Hyatt's, that your branding has probably been your weak spot that not everyone necessarily knows what a centric is, or a Hyatt places, or a Hyatt houses, and that Hyatt has failed, A, to communicate what all the brands stand for, and B, because they're all called Hyatt, it's some, sometimes difficult for the ordinary punter, not people in this room, to distinguish between a Regency, which is down the scale, compared to, say, a <clears throat> Park Hyatt, which would be on par with the Four Seasons. Is that a fair criticism? Well, I think the one thing that um, I think contributes to what you just described yeah. is the fact that other than Andas, um, every one of our brands has the word, the brand name yeah. Hyatt in it. There's a great advantage to that, which is there's a, the connective tissue, the thing that you can expect to see in all Hyatt properties, including Andas hotels, is um, that spirit of caring for people so they can be their best. That's our purpose as a company. And that's at the foundation of what is special about Hyatt. That's the, that's the secret ingredient that ex exists across all of our brands. And you can also expect uh, th there's an expectation of quality and, um, and an experience that comes along with having the Hyatt name in the brand. The downside to it yeah. is that it can, it can cause confusion because people say, well, I'm not really sure about the difference between Park Hyatt and the Grand Hyatt. My own experience with this is if you, um, my I'll just give you a couple of examples. My first trip to both Tokyo and then throughout China, consistently the people I would meet with would say, oh, you're the CEO of the Grand Hyatt Corporation. <laughs> Their identity of Hyatt is Grand Hyatt. Grand Hyatt is the, the, the dominant brand in China and in Southeast Asia. <coughs> That's what people associate uh, Hyatt with. In India, Hyatt Regency is, the, is what yeah. most people think of because of Hyatt Regency Delhi. It was the first entrant into this marketplace. Uh, the Park Hyatt was really defined around the Park Hyatt Tokyo, which was really the first modern vernacular Park Hyatt representation. So I think it kind of depends on where you are in the world as yeah. to how, you, how well you perceive and understand <coughs> those differences. But yes, we could do a better job of making sure that that's clear. And if you look at the lifestyle <coughs> brands, um, Andaz, we've had now for the last um, 10 years, 
Um, and it is now, I think, very, very firmly positioned as a luxury lifestyle uh, brand, which absolutely focuses on bringing local culture into the hotel. And if you look at the Hyatt-centric brand, the Hyatt-centric brand is not a luxury property, it's an upscale uh, hotel, full service, but also lifestyle and design forward, but very much about a launching pad into the local area. So it's Hyatt-centric is a place that you go and then you use that as the stepping stone into the local market as opposed to bringing culture into the hotel itself. That's, that's more of the Andaz concept. And of course, price point and level of uh, facilities quality and things like that are also differentiated. So the, the issue is that yeah. in order to really have it be meaningful, you have to experience it. I think the one, uh, the one thing I think we could do much better job of is when we're coming into a new market with a new brand, we always, um, we, we have underestimated the amount of effort it takes to get people exposed to it. So I'll give you two examples. When we opened the Andaz in Shanghai, it took us a couple of years for people to really understand what the Andaz was all about. And then thereafter, the hotel performed very well. In Tokyo, we didn't want to make the same mistake again, so we really promoted Andaz to mm. inform the market. And within three weeks, the hotel was ramped up. So I think there's a, big di there's a big learning there that we need to remember that because it's obvious to us doesn't mean it's obvious to the consumer, and we really have to put some effort behind that. But I think in today's world, brands matter. And th when people experience a particular brand and it's meant something to them, it had an impact on them, they will, it will influence their buying decision in the future. You think sometimes the concepts behind your brands are complex? Let's take Andaz versus W. If you were to ask me in one line what W stands for, it is assume you went to a hotel that was like a nightclub full of self-consciously hip people, you have a W. Whereas with an Andaz, it's difficult to put it in one line. Uh, I don't expect you to endorse the W discussion, but tell me if you were to put Andaz in one sentence, what would you say? I, <laughs> I would say uh, Andaz is a, is a place where um, you walk in and um, if you are a casual observer, it will be a very comfortable environment and very casual, but uh, still you'll, you'll experience something of, of high quality and, and an attention to detail. If you are a, uh, maybe a, a more active observer, you will notice uh, many different elements of what was brought into the hotel by way of either uh, the food and beverage offering and or art, um, because a lot of the hotels are really tapped into the local art community, but still that same sensibility, which is a much more calm environment and atmosphere. We intentionally didn't want to have a dance club as the vibe in Andaz. It was more um, intended to be um, uh, a much more calming environment, but still uh, very much sort of designed forward. So um, yeah. that's how I would describe it. Which is not one line. No, but, I'm sorry. But I, I, I'll work on that. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> but we're at the end of our time. So final question. What are Hyatt's plans in India over the next five years? Well, um, you know, everyone loves to talk about numbers, so I won't, I won't do that. Because um, we do have a significant growth already embedded in our future. So the answer is we will continue to grow here in a very significant way. The growth in general in the market has accelerated. So if it took us... 35 years to go from one hotel to 28 hotels, it should only take us another three years to double that, um, uh, three to four years, something like that. Um, I would say, in our case, there are so many magnificent um, things to discover about India and an, increasingly, an increasing um, desire uh, among Indian travelers, but also inbound travelers to have uh, those experiences and the, var the, vari the varied types of experiences that are available are fantastic. So we're going to open a high regency uh, in the Himalayas uh, next year, uh, McLeod uh, Ganj. And it's, uh, um, <coughs> it'll be, be a place that I will visit uh, for sure because it's just my, it's my speed and my style. I love being in the mountains. Um, but, you know, I picked up the Bombay Times this morning and there's some Bollywood actress who's hanging out in, um, I can't remember the name, it's a Himalayan town that she's uh, hanging out in. Did anyone see this article? 
Anyway, okay. uh, so I'm, I'm noticing that people are, are drawn to the mountains and they're yeah. drawn to the more uh, natural environment uh, of which there are a huge variety that are magnificent. I would say religious tourism is going to be uh, increasingly uh, popular and it's the, the history and the, um, the richness of those experiences is incredible. Everyone's been talking about the fact that people are looking for experiences more than product. Well, India is the place to be if that's what you're looking for. So to me, I think more uh, leisure and holiday destination options is critical for us, and we will continue to focus on that, not just beach opportunities, but, uh, but in the mountains as well. I think uh, important historical sites, including religious uh, destinations, is also critically important. And very importantly, as the Indian economy continues to grow, which it is at a very good pace, the increasing um, commercial class, people who are traveling more and more, both for work and for leisure, um, is really, that's the target audience that we need to go after. And for that, we need to, I, I think Hyde Place and Hyde House will be at the leading edge because we can actually productively and profitably open Hyde Place and Hyde House hotels in markets in which our full service hotels might not be able to be sustainable uh, yet. So I would say those are, the, those are the key themes that I see evolving over time. So assuming we, let me just summarize because it keeps saying time's up. Time's up. If we were having this conversation five years from now, we'd be talking about Hyatt in India, which was even more Indian as a company. Hyatt, which had many more hotels, but not just regencies or whatever. Hotels across the spectrum, across the price range, not just city hotels, but holiday hotels, resort hotels, not necessarily in the conventional sense, but experiential resort hotels, yep. opening and say, to use your examples, Banaras, Jaisalmer, yes. places where they give you a sense of experience. Yes. It would still be a company that was very focused on food, which has always been Hyatt's calling card. Yes. A company that was still focused on the core values of caring. That's it. But a company that would get its branding right. Is that Increasingly <laughs> so. With your help, Peter. With your help. Great. Thank you so much. Thank Michael. you. Thank you.